Sometimes it is the journey that teaches you a lot about your destination. In our previous video, we delve into the auto discovery route, Ethernet segment routes, and MAC IP advertisement routes. Now it's time to explore how eVPN handles broadcast and unicast and multicast traffic, which is bump traffic when it arrives at the leaf or the P. Hello friends, my name is Sabi, and in today's video, our focus will be inclusive multicast routes, specifically called as Route Type 3. eVPN Layer 2 implementation without multi-homing involves the utilization of BGP eVPN address family and incorporates support for two types of routes. The MAC IP route which is Route Type 2 and the eVPN IMET routes which is Route Type 3. The MAC IP routes is employed to convey the MAC and IP information of connected routes. This route type facilitates the transmission of host specific details within the eVPN framework. You can check on my previous video regarding eVPN MAC IP advertisement, the route type 2. The IMET route is advertised immediately after enabling BGP eVPN in the MAC VRF. It serves two main purposes, auto discovery of remote VTEPs, the virtual tunnel endpoints, associated with the same Ethernet virtual interconnect. Creation of a default flooding list in the MAC VRF, which enables the replication of broadcast, unknown unicast and multicast frames. The reception of BGP eVPN route triggers the establishment of the VXLAN tunnel, which are utilized for the communication between the endpoints. This is what we refer to as data plane. This route plays an important role in the creation and the management of VXLAN overlay network within the eVPN infrastructure. What will happen? A PE or a LEAF receives flooded broadcast, unknown unicast and multicast or a bump traffic. eVPN forwards those packets either ingress replication or layer 3 underlay multicast. We'll discuss each of them and include the trade-off in each approach. So what is ingress replication? In case of ingress replication, the ingress leaf sent multiple copies of packet to one of each egress leaves or PE. When C1 sends a bump packet, L1 receives it and L1 makes two copies of it and then flood it to L3 and L4 and send them one by one. The primary benefit of this model is that it keeps the underlay simple. The underlay needs to provide only IP routing to support the network virtualization. No additional configuration being required. So how this flooding list or the replication list being prepared? So this is done with the help of route type 3 and based on this route type 3 it will advertise the route types based on the same broadcast domain. So for example L1 is a part of VLAN 10, L3 is a part of VLAN 10 as well as L4 is a part of VLAN 10. So L1 will send the IMIT route to L3 and L4 at the same broadcast domain. So the replication list automatically being built using the route type 3 which is from the same broadcast domain. This makes the solution more robust as BGP route type 3 do the auto discovery. So the disadvantage of this approach is that the replication bandwidth required from the underlay can be high, especially if there are a lot of bump packets. eVPN forward those packet either in the ingress replication or a layer 3 underlay multicast. So we discuss about the ingress replication. So how we can use layer 3 multicast support in the underlay network. So this is the second approach to handle the bump traffic. So it uses layer 3 multicast multicast in the underlay network. By using multicast, the ingress leaf does not have to send a separate copy of each egress leaf. The leaf would send a single copy to the spine and the spine will replicate that and send it to the multiple leaves. So the difference between the ingress replication and the multicast approach is not apparent. In ingress replication, the leaf will replicate the packet and in multicast approach, the spine will replicate the packet. The main advantage of this approach is that it possible to handle a large volume of bump traffic or even well-known multicast packet efficiently. So the underlay also configured with multicast routing support. The replication list or the flooding list is done with the help of the IMET route. So the type 3 routes are also referred to as IMET route which is inclusive multicast routes. Type 3 update allow VTAPs to dynamically join or leave a broadcast segment. When a VTAP receives a type 3 route, it will add the remote VTAP plus VNI to the flood list. Discovering the other type of VTAP and the constructing the multicast tunnel using the IMET routes. In general, it is used to discover other VTAPs and construct the multicast tunnel using IMET routes. 
So this is a packet capture of a route type 3. We'll see that uh, what all fields have been there in case of uh, IMET route. An inclusive multicast Ethernet tag route, which is specific eVPN LRI, which consists of the address family identifier, which is L2VPN25, and the subsequent address family eVPN70. It carries the what kind of route type it mentioned as its uh, inclusive multicast route, which is uh, route type 3. It will have the who's advertised this, the originator IP address, the route distinguisher, the Ethernet tag information, and then we will have an extended community field. In that extended community, it carries the route target. Along with that, it will specify what kind of encapsulation that it is going to use, whether it is a VXLAN encapsulation or an MPLS encapsulation in the data plane. In order to identify the P tunnel used for to send the broadcast unknown unicast or multicast traffic, the inclusive multicast Ethernet route with the IMET route, it carries the PMSI tunnel attribute. So the PMSI stands for Provider Multicast Service Interface. If a P or a leaf that originates the advertisement, it uses a P multicast tree for a P tunnel for eVPN. The PMSI tunnel attribute contains the identity of the tree. So what kind of identity it will be? PE or a leaf that uses the P multicast tree from the P tunnel may aggregate two or more eVPN instances presented on the PE on the same tree. The PMSI tunnel attribute must carry an MPLS upstream label or a VNI, which is MPLS upstream label is for MPLS and VNI is for your data center, which the PE or the leaf has bound uniquely to the EVI. If PE or LEAF has already advertised the IMET for two or the more EVI that it now desired to aggregate, then the PE or the LEAF must re-advertise those routes. So we have something called as tunnel type. So this will identify what kind of tunnel it will be set to. So here it's set to an ingress replication and the tunnel identifier set to be as routable address by the PE or the LEAF. The PMSI attribute must carry the downstream assigned MPLS label or the VNI. So here the VNI is 199. And the leaf information required the flag for the PMSI tunnel attribute must set to be as zero. So we'll see that how the processing of a unicast packets will happen. If a PE learns C MAC address via control plane protocol, the PE can then distribute MAC address via BGP. And all the unicast MAC addresses will be learned prior to the traffic to the destination. However, if the destination MAC address of a received PE is not known by the PE, the PE may flood the packet when flooding one must be taken into account that the split horizon should be there. The split horizon forwarding rules should be applicable. The split horizon forwarding rules in VPLS solution is the same what we have taken under consideration. When a PE is capable of flooding, receives an unknown destination MAC address, it floods the frame. If the frame arrives from an attached C, PE1 must send a copy of that frame one every Ethernet segment belonging to the same EVI, for which it is the DF. Other than that, Ethernet segment on which it receives the frame, in addition to the PE, must flood the frame to all the PEs participating in that eVPN instance. For instance, PE1 sends to PE2, which is in the same Ethernet segment. So what will happen? It will block that in order to avoid the split horizon. In case of data center, the split horizon is based on what? Local bias, which we already been discussed in our Ethernet segment discussion, which is route type 4. In case of data center, the split horizon is based on the local bias, which we already been discussed. You will find the link here and go through that video. In other hand, the frame arrives from another PE, which is let's say PE3, must send a copy of the packet on each Ethernet segments for which it is the DF. PE1 will receive the packet and PE2, which is a non-DF, will block the packet. So the PE in a particular eVPN instance may use ingress replication using RSVP T, P2P, LSP or LDP, MP2P for sending such traffic on to the other PEs. So this brings end to our discussion of route type 3. So we already been discussed that for route type 3 being used for BUM ingress replication. Thank you for watching this video. Please share your feedback. I'll get back to you.